Can I call you Steve? Yeah, please, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Steve. Do you think that Taiwan has overall made you a more successful person or individual than if you would have just stayed in the U.S.? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Taiwan's been very good to me. I have no complaints. I love the people here. I think the opportunities have been have been great. Um, I've started a, a business, actually a couple different businesses over the years here. Uh, I had a restaurant for a while in Shinju. That didn't really work out so well. And then uh, more recently, uh, you know, worked in editing and translation. And uh, then, of course, I've worked in the university as a teacher as well. And I believe the Taiwanese people have been very kind, and it's been a great place to, to, to work and live. Yeah, I, I would assume that uh, you're in the right place at the right time since uh, Taiwan uh, is growing as a community of uh, researchers, right? And right, there's a lot of research that happens here in Taiwan. Uh, the Ministry of Education has a lot of pressure on scholars to, to publish their research, and so um, we've been able to help them, editors and translators, have been able to help them to publish their work and get it published abroad in, in good journals, and that's been our focus. Very well. Uh, today, a group of my students, they had a presentation on procrastination, which I thought was very interesting and impressive mm -hmm. because uh, I think many people, most people, can be accused of that, including myself. How are you on procrastination? I, I never really seen you as a procrastinator. I've seen you as taking every opportunity that you spotted at the right time, at the right moment. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm really glad that's the impression that I give. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I keep, I do want to minimize the time between thinking and action. And I think that's been a goal of mine. I, I don't like to dilly-dally over stuff. Generally, uh, it doesn't get done or uh, psychic energy is wasted by keeping all of these open-ended, open threads out there and you end up doing nothing. So I would much prefer a uh, good plan today rather than a perfect plan tomorrow, always. A motto of my life. If I could do it today and get it done, uh, I will. Uh, and I keep a, really a, a yellow pad, I guess is my main thing. I have a, everywhere I go, I have this list of stuff. So as soon as I think of something, I write it down, and then I cross it out when I get it done. And then I have a daily to-do list every day that I transfer some of the items from here onto here. And after I cross everything off my list, I'm done for the day. So it's, it's not a high-tech solution, but it works. And it's worked like that for years. Great. Um, one question. I do know that at the time you started, there were many, many other competitors in Taiwan sure. uh, doing almost this, well, perhaps not so much into academia, but maybe doing other kind of... Uh, there are still lots of competitors now. Yeah. yeah. How did you fend up the competitors? How did you establish yourself above the, uh, the rest? Um, I think what we emphasize from the beginning is good content, uh, content marketing. We publish a newsletter. We published an email newsletter. I've spoken at over 100 universities in Taiwan uh, about my topic. And by creating a, uh, an expertise, creating authority within that area with good content, I believe we generated trust, created trust and credibility. And that was kind of like building a big fence around it because once you uh, have people who read everything that you write or come to your speeches, they're not going to switch to a competitor. They, they, they know you, they trust you, they're going to stick with you. So um, by doing that consistently over many years, uh, I believe that that's just created kind of a competitive advantage, a bit of a moat maybe, to other people coming in and trying to uh, take our market share. I see. Of course, there's been, uh, there's always issues with business and, and you know, fending off competitors and you were telling me about some issues you had with uh, previous employees and you know that's all that, that all comes with the territory sure. yeah. but um, I want to go back to one very important part of your life in Taiwan which was your PhD studies yes and that's how we met and that's how I got into doing my PhD work here as well and uh, I think to a certain extent that has enabled both of us to to have 
pretty much uh, a better uh, outcome. Oh yeah, I mean, we Taiwan has some wonderful universities, and they have great PhD programs. And, and you and I have studied at, at a very good one here, right. uh, Zhao Tong University. We both graduated from there uh, with our PhD, and I, I have uh, no complaints about it. And I think that having the PhD has obviously opened many opportunities mm -hmm. as a as a teacher. And um, over a number of years, I've taught for many years and enjoyed all of it. And it wouldn't be possible for us to be professors, of course, yeah. if we didn't have the PhD. Especially not in Taiwan. Yeah. You could be yeah. a professor in quite a few countries without having a PhD, but not in Taiwan. Right, right. So how do you think the uh, degree has enabled you to gain customers and trust? I assume through the academia and your time in the academia, it has made uh, uh, valuable connections and people that were interested in your work and the kind of work that you do. And I assume that the, the, the PhD program that you studied in might have started you in some way in this direction. Did oh, sure. I mean, obviously, as a PhD student, we have to write and publish papers. And my own efforts to write and publish exposed me to how to write um, research papers. And then, of course, my work in the university, I was teaching writing to PhD students. And then, you know, what we do now is editing. Uh, research papers, so it's highly related to my work both as a student and as a teacher in the university. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, it did help. Okay, has this coronavirus thing affected your work or, or, or lifestyle in any way <laughs> very much? Uh, no, I mean, yes and no. I mean, obviously, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, we wear masks more than we used to, but from a business perspective, no. We've been busier than ever. We, Every month is better than it was last year. So the virus, if anything, has been good for us, probably because when researchers can't go out, they just sit home and write papers. So I guess uh, from that perspective, our business has been uh, fine uh, as a result of the virus. Uh, I know that many people, especially science journals, I was quite uh, flabbergasted by this. They are all catering to China, even though China has basically created this problem and you know I do give credit to China China has grown a lot and a lot of business opportunity don't don't get me wrong but we have to admit the fact that China did create this problem this global problem uh, and I, I, I I've seen that a lot of the science journals are actually catering to China you know so it's like uh, you know 80% of the papers that are published now are from China so so is this kind of a, a way of uh, uh, China does something but China gets the, the credit and um, I, I mean I don't want to say anything bad about uh, China or anything like that but there was one guy uh, some Canadian guy I don't know if you've seen the interview he said that if he came down with COVID the best place he considers to be would be China <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, just to back up, I don't think it's true that 80% of papers come from China. Uh, I, I, I know that... On the COVID thing. Oh, on COVID? Not, not overall, but on the okay, COVID thing. Okay, uh, I, I don't know about that. Um, but are you asking about how they're doing in China with the virus? Is that what your question is? Uh, actually, my question was more or less related to... Uh, do you think that um, is, is really... You, you know, because some groups or disciplines or businesses or this or that or the other are praising China. Some are actually trying to hold China responsible for it. So uh, what is your opinion? I mean, where do you stand? Are you kind of neutral? I don't know that I have an opinion one way or the other on yeah. this. So um, we're pretty neutral. No, no I, yeah, I, I haven't spent much time researching it one way or the other. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay, perhaps the, the last question that I have for you would be, uh, what advice would you give to students that are, you know, hoping to get up and do something with their life once they're done with, with, with school. Obviously, school is good, you know, they can meet people like, like you especially through education and they can learn some interesting and useful things, but uh, I'm sure they need a lot more than that. So once they're done with school, what, 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 what advice would you give them so they can, uh, w would you say that would you say that perhaps you don't always have to look for the thing that you love the most, but for the things that you are very good at doing? Or the things that come not as difficult for you to do as they would for others. And 
you know, maybe you can relate that to your work a little bit. Is, is, is you work something that you, you love to do? I mean, you can't, like, like the student asked, do you get up in the morning thinking, wow, I want to read an interesting paper today <laughs> and edit it? Well, um, I do enjoy my work very much. I enjoy the, the challenges of operating a business in Taiwan. I think it's very interesting. Uh, lots of new problems. I, I enjoy talking to my department managers every week. We have a one-on-one -on -one with all of them, I do, and uh, they tell me about the status of their teams and what their new challenges are. And because I'm faced with new challenges, I I'm, I'm, uh, need to keep learning. I keep reading all the time. And I enjoy learning and reading to apply to something like we talked about before. I don't like there to be a big gap between thinking and action. So the fact that there's so much action required means that I have to do thinking. It, it forces me into a, into a learning state all the time. So I, I, I do value that very much. And um, so yeah, I don't, uh, I think that yes, my, my work is something that's highly interesting to me. It's not my only interest, of course. I, I also have an interest in agriculture, farming. I'm starting a new farm in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've been learning f uh, for as well. But again, I'm taking action on my farm, so I have to learn to do that. And so again, the action is pushing me to learn and pushing my, my comfort zone. So yeah, I would say I very much enjoy my work. Yeah, very much. Very well. Okay, so related to the last question. Um, you started a business in Taiwan, but you, you've expanded into quite a few different places. As as our our offices, understand. we have offices in, uh, in, in Hong Kong, in uh, Beijing, in mainland China. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did, did you say you... Be, be, uh, uh, Hong, Shanghai, Beijing, and Hong Kong. Yeah. Right. Did you say you also have one in uh, India, or you did at some point? Yeah, we have a, a, a local brand there that sells to the India market as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would you say that uh, the kind of line of work that you're doing at the moment, and the kind of business that you're operating in Taiwan, would would this be something that works really well just for Asia, or would it work, in your opinion, in many other places? Oh, I mean, you mean editing? Or yeah, research editing papers? and translations, because you do that as well, right? Well, yeah, there are competitors that are operating very successfully in, in every country around the world. I mean, I'm not unique uh, mm -hmm. for this job or for this type of industry. Right. Uh, there are global players who are all over the world, including Taiwan, but also other countries also. There are some that are specific only to that country. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there's large and small players, hundreds of them, maybe thousands. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, sure, it can be done. Okay, so uh, one other thing. Would you say that if you have your most business in a particular place, it's better to be stabilized there, to be there? Because maybe uh, some of the big players might want to come and meet you personally and, and talk to you about certain things. And, I mean, is it better to be located in the business in the country where you're doing business? Is that your well? Question? Yeah, because I, from from my understanding, your your biggest portion of the business is is located in Taiwan, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So this would probably be the best place for you to spend most to of your based. time. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we started here. Uh, the the Taipei office has most of the people that are employed by our by our company, and uh, we're very busy. Uh, always doing lots of work for, and it, it's great because being in Taiwan, we are interacting with our clients at speeches uh, or through our newsletter. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's good to be on the ground and in the place where you're operating the business, I think, definitely, for sure. Okay. Would, would, did you ever consider, like, maybe you live in uh, quite a bit of time in some other parts, maybe like Hong Kong? Hong Kong's a good, good place. Hong Kong's great. I've, I've taught at Hong Kong. Chinese University of Hong Kong for, for, uh, for a year. Um, I enjoy it. We have an office there also. Uh, but tai, Taiwan is uh, more people than Hong Kong and, right. and more researchers. Okay. And uh, we Bigger market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Dr. Wallace, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate it.